Um, I am honored to be joined by Dr. Claire Craig now from the UK, who uh, wrote this article in the BMJ. You've also been involved in, in large uh, written essays and discussions about PCR testing. Uh, Michael Yeadon, who has, is the ex-Pfizer uh, scientist that has come out uh, discussing these issues. Uh, but, you know, we know that the PCR testing is a mess. It's obviously creating all sorts of havoc. But I want to ask you a question about asymptomatic spread, uh, because it's why we're masked. It's why I'm stuck on a plane wearing a mask. It's why we're locking down. We're destroying economies. What is, when you think of this conversation from a scientific point of view, what is the question we need to be asking ourselves about asymptomatic transmission? Okay, um, thanks very much for having me. Um, yeah, so I think the, the first thing to think about is what we mean asymptomatic COVID. And that's a, a term that makes no sense in many ways because COVID is a disease and a disease requires symptoms. It's a definition of what a disease is. However, we'll go along with it and say there are three circumstances in which you could be positive and have no symptoms. One of them is that you're in the incubation period. So you are pre-symptomatic. That is, you've caught the virus and you're in the few days leading up to getting symptoms. The next is you may have a full test result. So all tests are not perfect and they have a low percentage rate at which they live when there isn't a disease present. Um, so, you know, you have to be mindful of that being a potential scenario. And the last is somebody who has virus on board, but has no symptoms. Now that's a concept that we used to describe as being immune, right? It's immunity. If you've got a virus invading, if you breathe in a virus and it can be picked up on a test, but you have no symptoms, it's because your body is handling the immune system. So then we get to the question, well, can people with immunity spread the disease? And we know for, other illnesses that's usually not but let's look specifically at this because it was a novice and so we shouldn't just make assumptions um and so when we've looked at that question some people they jump there so there, there's a big study that a lot of people put weight on from nursing homes in washington and dc and what that study showed that there was definitely a big outbreak of covid there in the spring um, and there were a number of members of staff and residents who tested positive, but had no symptoms. So we're in great news, what we want to see. But that was interpreted as being worrying because all of these people had disease and there was an outbreak. And they made the association between the two, which is an unreasonable thing to do, I think, because there were plenty of people who also had symptoms in the outbreak who could have been the ones, the source of the spread. The other way people shortcut it is they say, well, we can measure how much virus is in the test result of someone who's symptomatic and someone who's asymptomatic and extrapolate from that, that people with those must be spreading it because we found lots of virus. But I don't accept that as a spread. For evidence of spread, you need to have an individual who has the virus passing it on to somebody else who then gets symptoms. Now, in the study that you read there, of those six people who um, spread allegedly asymptomatically, um, those, those were the ones that we had found by looking at meta-analyses. Um, so what that means is that we had looked only at studies that had tried to group together all of these anecdotal reports. Because in medicine, you don't want to base your decisions around individual stories. And so we bring them together and find an average of what's going on. Now, um, one, well, actually two studies among those meta-analyses in China. And I'm also quite skeptical about what's come out of China. It's contradictory, it's confusing, and it's not replicated elsewhere. But I include, I still looked at those two from China that were included because it, it was include, they were included by, by school institutions who were doing these reviews. And both of them had both stories, and I think it may have been a single patient because it was similar authors, similar story. So I think it was actually probably just one patient, but you know, I ring on the side of caution, I said it was two. And in one of these papers, they described 
described a 30-year-old who is asymptomatic, who was alleged to have spread COVID to his colleague, male colleague, who also remained asymptomatic. Now, I don't see that that's a spread of a disease. If you, if the person who you're giving it to never gets symptoms, that's not a disease. And that looks to me much more likely to have been coincidental false positive results from the testing because they had done 4,000 tests in that study. So that's that case out the way. The other two papers, um, one of them was from Italy. So in um, Bergamo in, in Lombardy, there was a small called Vo. And during their outbreak, they managed to test almost the entirety of this town. It was nearly three people. Now, as I said, no test is perfect. They had just under 3,000. They had 29 people come back as asymptomatic. And so essentially 1% me, that are coming back as asymptomatic could very well fall right into the, um, the margin of error in the test itself, which is, is how that could also be explained. Okay. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, the, the numbers completely fit that story. And then wow. one study, study, which has been re recycled and recycled in these reviews, which I think this is an important point to make, actually. But in, in general, if somebody comes up with a hypothesis and shows an experiment that proves this, other scientists try to replicate that. And that's how we move forward. We have to be able to replicate the experiment. But we, because of this situation in medicine and where we read literature and bring together the anecdote, instead of replicating it, we've recycled and recycled and recycled the same stories. And this one cycled a lot was um, a paper from Brunei. So I had an outbreak of COVID in spring. It was due to a religious festival in Malaysia where a lot of people from Brunei went to visit. And they came back with COVID and this was a genuine outbreak. But when they started contacts of these people and the people that had been to the festival, they ended up doing quite a substantial number of tests. And among the tested, they found people who had new symptoms. Um, two of the people in the outbreak were alleged to have passed on COVID at never having symptoms. There were several others that were pre-symptomatic, but I'm leaving that aside. So of the two that passed on who were asymptomatic, one of them was a 13-year-old girl who tested positive and consequently all of her class were tested, all of her friends, her family, and her, her teacher, one of her teachers, um, also tested positive. Now, when you're testing a lot like that, you have to be concerned that you might just randomly pick up a test. Sure. Anyway, so they asked her teacher, she had COVID symptoms. Now, remember, this was in the height of spring when there was a lot of anxiety about and um, so people would have been very worried that they might have got it. And this was, she did have a, a mild cough one day. So that was the basis of that story. Then there was another story of a man who'd been at the festival who never had symptoms but tested positive. And his wife tested positive and had a runny nose and their baby tested positive and had a cough for one. And that, that's the basis of the asymptomatic transmission that has been reported in literature. So it's not, you know, you would hope, given that what's happened as a result, you would hope to be seeing hundreds, maybe thousands of cases that we could point at. But that's that's all that we've got. Well, Dr. Craig, we have a little bit of a bad connection, and I look forward to getting deeper into details in the future because you're out there on the front lines really asking the right questions. But if I am to summarize and just make sure that I'm correct on this, that the world is locking down. We're referencing these asymptomatic people as being the super spreaders as they've been described. You were describing them as most likely people who are just simply immune that are not being affected uh, by whatever viral particles they're coming in contact with. But am I to understand that the entire world is locking down and putting masks on people that are healthy. We have quarantined throughout the years people that are sick, and that's what a quarantine is. For the first time ever, we are essentially quarantining healthy people based on this idea of asymptomatic spread, and the billions of people involved in this process are going through this because it appears around 10 or like maybe less than two handfuls of, of singular people events 
have been documented, that have been looked at by, you know, hundreds of studies looking at those handful of people? Is that, I mean, is that what I'm understanding? That this entire yeah, that, thing that comes down right. to a handful I mean, it's of people? Worth it's worth clarifying that pre-symptomatic spread is a real thing, okay. right? For the risk, but who hasn't yet developed symptoms, passing on real disease. But when we try to assess how much of a risk that is, again, we fall into the situation of there not being a disease. But there was a big study that tried to do that in Singapore, and they reckoned from the, I can't remember the numbers, but it was a substantial number of cases and outbreaks that they had. And they could attribute 7% of the disease to people who are pre-symptomatic. So 93% of the spread were from people who had symptoms. Wow. I mean, again, it, it just sort of follows what we've been looking at in all of the evidence we've been sharing today uh, everywhere. Science is, is something that is to be determined by uh, being able to be reproduced. The science should be involving hundreds, if not thousands of people, especially when that science is going to dictate the future and life experience of billions of people. Uh, Dr. Claire Craig, thank you for sharing with us today. I look forward to uh, having further discussions in the future uh, as you look into these issues that are truly affecting our lives. It's great to know that, and, and you are joining a, a large group of world-renowned scientists that are speaking out and saying, we can do this better. Uh, there are better ways forward. So I wanna thank you for being brave enough to step outside of the narrative being shared by mainstream news uh, and actually addressing the science. So thank you for taking the time today with us. Thanks for having me. All right, take care. It would be great to be back.